Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being with us on this uh, nice Friday afternoon. Hope you all are uh, looking forward to a good weekend. We've got several things to chat with you about today. One, of course, are going to be the COVID numbers. Secondly, we're going to talk a little bit about vaccinations. We're going to talk about some of our pharmacy partners. Um, and then, of course, we're going to take your questions. So uh, beginning with the numbers here, the numbers continue to look good. Uh, we will post the, uh, the slides from the pandemic task force, but if you can see this, I guess you can kind of, you will see that the numbers are, are continuing to head down in terms of new hospital admissions, in terms of uh, hospitalizations, number of people in the hospital, and of course, number of cases. So let me tell you about that. Number of cases, the city of St. Louis right now is averaging uh, about 21 new cases per day. That is less than seven new cases per 100,000 people. Uh, when you compare that to other areas in, in the region, we are uh, uh, at or near the lowest. St. Charles is actually just a tiny bit uh, lower than we are per 100,000. Uh, St. Louis County's higher, Jefferson's higher. Um, and when you look at the state of Missouri, the state of Missouri is running about eight new The credit goes to all of you who have been wearing your masks, staying socially distanced. Uh, and, and of course, uh, when, you, when you have been eligible and when you've been able, you're, you're getting the vaccine. Uh, as a, a bit of a side note, this is the first time I was speaking with Chief Hayden yesterday, and this is the first time in almost a year that the St. Louis Police Department has nobody out with COVID and nobody out quarantined. Now, that may not hold, but we have vaccinated over 55% of the people that work for our police department. Uh, we'd like to vaccinate 100%, but of course this is voluntary. And I think between the mitigation procedures of mask wearing and the vaccinations, uh, you know, we're we're thankful that right right now we don't have anybody out at our uh, police department with COVID or being quarantined. Um, other numbers, uh, hospitalization numbers, and you all know that these numbers run two days behind. We are looking right now at the four major hospital systems. There are 264 people in the hospital right now with either COVID positive or suspected positive. Yesterday was the first day that that number dropped below 300 uh, in months and months and months. And so that's, that's good. We're very happy about that. Now of that 264 people, 70 of those people are in the ICU. Um, so they're pretty, pretty ill and 47 of the 70 are on ventilators. So there continue to be some seriously ill people, but we are very happy that the, that the people currently hospitalized in the region has uh, dropped below 300 and is down at 264. Hopefully that will hold. Um, we, if you look back at that number from, let's say 60 days ago, let me find it here. January 4th, there were 884 people in the hospital. Today, 264. So very significant drop there and, and a very welcome, uh, welcome drop there. Um, you know, the, the most important thing, of course, is to keep people from uh, out of the hospital and from getting really ill and, and dying from the COVID uh, virus. And so that is why the vaccines are so, so important. Um, so that's it with regard to the numbers. Let's see, is there anything else? No, I think that's it with regard to the numbers today. Now let's talk, well, one other thing. Positivity rate, City of St. Louis, our 14 day positivity rate is down below 4%. Um, so that's also real, real good. And you know, there's not as much testing being done now as there was a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, because people are concentrating on getting the vaccine. 
But having that low positivity rate of under 4%, even as fewer people are being tested, what that's, that's a very good positivity rate because, of course, the people who are being tested are those uh, more people who have symptoms or who are concerned about having symptoms. So uh, we're very, you know, knock on wood uh, with regard to that, so being below 4%. Now, with regard to vaccinations, you know, uh, last weekend, we vaccinated around 1,500 people at the Omega Center, which was in North St. Louis at Goodfellow Natural Bridge. Tomorrow, we are vaccinating um, 1,500 to 2,000 people at the Carpenters Hall, which is at 1401 South Hampton, and the folks invited there are folks with more South St. Louis zip codes. Last weekend was North St. Louis zip codes. Um, and as of this morning, we had, we were almost full on appointments. So if any of you got, we sent uh, an invitation to around 2,800 people. Uh, as of last night or this morning, we had about 1,600 signed up. And another, uh, we were expecting probably a couple hundred more who would sign up today. That is, like all these events, you must have an appointment. It is by invitation only, and you have to have an appointment to, to be there. So please don't just come and line up in your car on Hampton hoping to get in. You, you need to have an appointment in order to, uh, to get the vaccination tomorrow at Carpenters Hall. Uh, for anyone who doesn't have email or uh, cell phone, I think you all know, because I've said it so many times, but you may call the health department, 657-1499, if that, if, in order to get on the list if, uh, if you weren't able to sign up via email or your cell phone number. Um, so that's, that's good news. We're happy to be doing that tomorrow. I mean, we, if everyone shows up for their appointment, uh, we could do close to 2,000 uh, first vaccinations tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll, we will be doing the uh, Moderna vaccination, and then four weeks later you'll come back for your second shot. Um, another bit of good news on vaccinations, we are getting more vaccines. We're getting more vaccine both through the, the local public health department, which is our department here in the city, but also community events that are being uh, run by the state or the Urban League. And I guess the, the last thing here, which I think is, is really good news, uh, a month ago, let's say, there were three pharmacies in the city where you could get a vaccination. There were uh, small pharmacies, uh, West Pine, um, one on South Grand, and Winkleman on Merrimack. So we had three pharmacies. Now uh, that has been expanded to where we've added uh, two additional pharmacies, St. Louis Hills. And when I say we, the state has added these additional pharmacies, these two, St. Louis Hills and also Gateway Apothecary. Um, they don't have a lot of doses, but they have a few. At least they had a few. Uh, but in addition to that, next week we're going to have uh, two or three Walgreens and CVS coming online, and then after that, another one or two. So we're looking at about four right now, two Walgreens, two CVS, along with the five independent uh, pharmacies. So that's nine pharmacies. We hope to expand that because we know that that is more convenient for people um, if you can go somewhere in your, in your neighborhood. Now, those pharmacies are continuing to follow the same um, phase 1b tier 2 eligibility that we are which means either a healthcare worker um, a first responder someone over 65 65 or older or someone 18 to 64 who has an underlying health condition so that's the phase that we are in right now uh, we still have uh, many thousands of people that are uh, probably about uh, there, there are about 115,000 people in the city of St. Louis who are either 65 or older or who have underlying health conditions, and that's the 115,000 people. Uh, as of a few days ago, there had been about 30,000 of those people who had received at least one vaccination. Uh, so we have a long way to go in terms of vaccinating our older population as well as the folks under 65 
who have underlying health conditions. And so we're working very hard at that. Uh, we want all of those folks to be vaccinated. Um, and then, of course, uh, we want to move on to teachers and child care workers, et cetera. We just have to have enough, enough vaccine to do that. Um, and so that's, uh, I think that's good news on vaccinations. Uh, never enough, but we are getting more and more each, each week. This week we got 3,000 um, units of vac vaccination. And so that's, that's up. We are only promised right now 900 a week. Hopefully that we will get more than that next week. We don't know. This makes it a little difficult to plan uh, when you don't know exactly how many vaccinations you're, you're going to have, but we're gonna continue just to work with that and get those vaccinations out and into arms as quickly as possible. So uh, we do ha expect to have another mass vaccination event next week. Um, and, and you know, some people have said, well, why don't we go to Bush Stadium or why don't we go to the Enterprise Center or you know wherever? 2,000 vaccinations in a day is, is a big mass vaccination site. And so that's why we went one in North St. Louis, one in South St. Louis, and we may just you know go back and forth on that until we can get through our list. It's not the location <clears throat> that we're struggling to find, Bush Stadium or the Enterprise Center, or someone mentioned some, another, the oh, the Dome, of course. All those would be fine locations. We're trying to make it as convenient as possible for people, but we only have the vaccine that we have. So just because we have it in a bigger place doesn't mean we're gonna have any more shots. So uh, we're trying to make it as convenient for folks as possible and uh, to just get as many uh, shots in arms as we can. So that's, that's vaccinations. Um, do we have questions? Quite a few. Quite a few. Uh, care of the bush dating questions yeah um, it, that's that's a fine idea it's a good idea but you you still only have the vaccine that you have uh kevin's question who's watching um do you feel like the distribution of vaccine has been equitable compared to the rural and urban areas in the state of missouri well kevin you know we've all seen this on the news um what we have continued to do is advocate for more vaccine to come to the urban areas that uh, has begun to be happening now. Uh, there are more people in the urban areas who want the vaccination. I think that's good for all of us because we're living in a denser uh, populated area uh, and we just have to continue to, to get more. Uh, the Urban League's doing some vaccinations. Yesterday there was a or 2,000 people in a day, that's a pretty good sized event. So um, we, we just need more, we need more vaccine. Uh, Cheyenne's question, Mayor, you did mention that you, we do want to vaccinate teachers, but that there are 115,000 individuals who are 65 and up or have an underlying health condition. When does the city anticipate being able to get to the 1B tier three category? Well, it all depends on how much vaccine we get, of course. But yesterday, I don't know if you watched Dr. Garza's the Pandemic Task Force report, uh, he indicated that the hospitals, uh, he expected it would be at least till the end of March. Um, I, I think that's probably a good estimate. It just depends on how much uh, vaccination, vaccine we get to do the vaccinations. Uh, I don't think there's any teacher out there, as, as much as I know teachers want the vaccination, I don't think any of them would want to take the place of a 75 year old with health conditions. So we, we're just really trying to get through the older folks and the folks with health conditions uh, so that then we can move on to what's called tier three, phase one B tier three. Uh, and we're doing that as rapidly as possible, as many vaccines as we can get. And we're expecting um, that we shortly, and we don't know when, but that we will get some of the Johnson and jo uh, Johnson vaccine. Um, and, and that's the state is also using that in many of their uh, vaccination sites. That's the one shot vaccine. And we're expecting to get some of that. Uh, you know, our high priorities for that are people that are homebound or people that can't get out uh, to get to a, a mass vaccination event. Uh, and there are quite a few people, our Department of, of Senior Services has a list of those folks. And so we are hopeful that we'll 
uh, shortly be able to really vaccinate those people. Most of them are, are, are quite elderly and uh, that we'll be able to go to them or to a, a place very close to them. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is coming online as well. We have not received any yet. Uh, it was just approved a week ago today, I guess it was, or maybe tomorrow. It was just, just approved. Um, the state does have some. We don't have any yet, but we'll get some. Uh, so right now we're continuing to use the Pfizer and the Moderna. The state has said that local public health departments will be um, primarily receiving Moderna. It's easier to store. It stores um, at, a, at a more of a normal freezer temperature. The Pfizer stores at very, very cold temperatures. And so the state has said that they will be focusing Pfizer in the hospital situations where it, it's easier for them to store that. So everybody just has to keep doing as much vaccinating as possible. The hospitals are working down through the age age ranges. They started at 75 and above, and I think they're down at 69 or 70 now that they're, they're doing, and they're, just, they're working their way uh, down through their list based on age groups. Um, so we, we will get there. Um, please, uh, if you have the opportunity to take a vaccine, any of the vaccines, please take it. Uh, don't take more than one appointment. It, it's interesting, last Saturday we had quite a few no-shows on our appointments. And that concerned us because, um, you know, we don't know why people, they, maybe they had an appointment somewhere else. You know, they might have gotten an appointment and then had a chance for another one. And, and so just make one appointment and stick to that because everybody's taking these appointments. And, and um, you know, we can't overpromise. It's, you know, we can't overbook. Uh, but we need for the folks who have appointments to please show up, show up just a little bit before your appointment. Don't show up an hour early or two hours early because that just clogs up the works. Uh, show up just a little bit before your appointment and keep your appointment, please. A couple more vaccine questions, Mayor, and I think you may have just addressed homebound. <coughs> Nez asked, how can the city or what is the city doing to help get vaccine to people who are unable to get out of their house? Right, so we have um, coordinated with Meals on Wheels. Uh, this was a week ago, maybe two weeks ago by now. Uh, for folks that get Meals on Wheels, many of whom are homebound or difficult for them to get out, we put a flyer, this was a paper flyer there, and we also, when the person delivering the Meals on Wheels, talked to the individual about it so that they could get signed up for the vaccine. Um, some of them are able to come to a vaccination site. Uh, tomorrow, for example, I know that we have 175 or 200 folks that are coming, um, <clears throat> that are on the list, that are being transported there. They're coming in, in a, a senior center uh, van or bus. And so we're, we're doing that by reaching out to them. And then ultimately, uh, when we get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, we will begin going to homes of people who really cannot cannot leave. That's very uh, time consuming process. So uh, if people are able, we're, we're trying to find ways for them to get transportation to uh, one of the mass vaccination sites that, we've, that we have had and are going to uh, have this week, uh, tomorrow, and likely next week. A uh, question on vaccines and the pharmacies. Are the pharmacies in the city uh, pulling people from the city's sign-up list or the state sign-up list, or do people need to go through the individual pharmacies themselves to try to get vaccinated there? So they are, they are not using the state or the city list. So you have to go to the, the Walgreens or the CVS or uh, you know, the, the individual pharmacy sites to get on their list to get vaccinations. Now they don't have, <clears throat> thousands of vaccinations you know they might do 75 a day you know something along that line but and, and it's not at every uh, at every Walgreens CVS or, or or store so you have to go to them but they also have a clientele who normally gets their um, their prescriptions there and so they're also reaching out to some of those folks who are over 65 uh, or who they know have underlying health conditions. Uh, Jill's question is, when does the city anticipate being able to send notifications out to folks who maybe weren't one of the first P 
people to sign up when you launch your notification. I keep getting invites to hour to events that are four hours away by the state. Hmm. Well, I don't know when you signed up for ours. Um, we 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 established the sign up list on January thirteenth, if thirteenth, if I'm remembering correctly, and so we are in some zip codes we've gotten to most of the people in that zip code in other zip codes, where there are just hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of people probably from that zip code that are on our list and what we know is that i mentioned to you that we sent i think 2800 invitations out um it was on tuesday i guess it was it, to folks in uh, zip codes in primarily in south st louis this time we were in north st louis last time um, and the sign up rate, what we had about 1,600 people sign up very quickly. Now, they're, likely there's still some people signing up today, which is, which is fine. Uh, but it, it will be a while. We've got 60,000, over 60,000 people on our list. But one of the problems with, um, you know, the federal government has left this all up to states. And the state of Missouri has left it up to every county, all 114 counties. And so each county is doing something a little bit different. Uh, it, it, I think we all agree it would have been really useful to, to be working uh, off of one list. But at this point, um, every, you know, St. Charles County is working off of their list, St. Louis County off of theirs, City of St. Louis off of ours, and et, et cetera. So uh, it, it will be a while if you just signed up you know, in the last week or so, it'll be a while. Take, uh, take your first opportunity. If you're getting invitations uh, to get the vaccine, try to get your appointment and get there. And I, I don't know about four hours away, but I know there are a number of people, is it today or tomorrow? I think today and tomorrow that um, are going to Columbia, Missouri, which is right at two hours away from St. Louis. So. Uh, take the opportunity where you can if you're able to do that uh, so our next general questions have to do with covid uh, guidelines and restrictions that are still in place uh, we have a couple <coughs> of questions submitted about saint patrick's day opening day and cinco de mayo and what kind of guidelines the city will set forth to make sure that people can observe those days safely so uh each one of those let's let's go to saint patrick's day it's coming up next week, I guess. No, week after. Um, and, you know, there are no St. Patrick's Day parades at this point. Bars and restaurants still have to follow the same rules that are in effect now, which means 50% capacity, socially distanced, mask wearing, closing at 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. So that is that is St. Patrick's Day. I know... Um, the uh, uh, Dogtown area is, uh, you know, they're having some businesses decorate their businesses and trying to make it as festive as possible. Uh, some folks are getting reservations there. So St. Patrick's Day, no, no parades at this point. We did announce yesterday, or the day before, I think it was yesterday, <clears throat> we announced that along with the Cardinals that uh, on April the 8th, the Cardinals, there will be baseball. You will be able to have fans there. That is an outdoor venue. That's, that's a plus. And they're only going to have about 32% occupancy with uh, seats uh, spaced out, maybe as uh, two or four seats together, depending on how the tickets are sold, and then six feet apart in each direction, uh, all directions, I should say, for the next group of people. So, and mask wearing inside. No bags can come in, no purses, because they, they're not going to check those. Uh, all cashless pay. So uh, they have a very extensive plan, which we worked with them on to get that approved. Now, Cinco de Mayo, that's May the 5th. Um, that's two months from now. Uh, I, I th at this point in time, it would look a lot like St. Patrick's Day. Uh, there's usually, I think there's one Cinco de Mayo parade. Uh, I don't know if they're planning to have that. I think these things are going to continue to get worked out. Any large event has to submit a plan for how they're uh, going to operate their event. That plan goes to the health department and we work back and forth with you in order to figure out what, what can be done. Cinco de Mayo, 
I know it doesn't, I, I, there's someone who's asking me um, through Facebook and Facebook Messenger and text message, et cetera, what about Cinco de Mayo? Uh, you know, we just don't have that answer right now, but if you're planning to have an event, you need to have, uh, put in a written application to the health department uh, for Cinco de Mayo or any other uh, major event that you're planning to have. We're working with all kinds of major venues right now um, to, to, uh, for them to implement a plan that, that our health department approves. And almost 2.30, so last question, just to summarize uh, a couple of questions we got um, about the 10 people uh, gathering in your home, 11 p.m. closure, and restriction on capacity of small businesses. What kind of information or data, case trends, does the city need to see to begin uh, lifting some of those restrictions? So we are looking at some of those things right now. Um, what were the two, 10 people in your home? 10 people in your home, 11 p.m. in small business capacity. So the small business capacity is, um, if you're talking about bars and restaurants, and I assume that you are, uh, is at 50% right now with mask wearing and social distancing. I don't know that that will change anytime too soon. Um, we've got to continue to see these, these numbers. 11 p.m. closing, it's, this is one of the things that we are talking about. Um, but we have not made a change in that yet. And then the third thing was 10 people uh, in, your, in your home for gatherings. That's a guideline, that's not a requirement. It was put in place, if you remember, back before Thanksgiving when our numbers were really going up to really just tell people, please stay with your own pod, stay with your own family or your small group of friends. It, it was a guideline, it's not a you know, we, we don't police what you do in your home. We are, though, just saying, please, um, to stop the spread, stay six feet apart, wear your mask, limit your circle. Now, as more and more people become vaccinated, you know, some of that eases up a bit. But we still, it, it's not uh, just a free-for-all at this point in time. So, um, you know, all of those things are being looked at now and um, our, our focus is on getting these shots in arms because that will be the best thing that we can do. But, um, you know, we, we haven't changed those yet, but we are looking at it. That's it for questions today. That's it for Friday? Okay, well, uh, I hope everybody's having a good weekend. I'm looking out the, out the window here that's right in front of me. It looks like a beautiful day out. Have a great weekend. and. Um, Appreciate you. We'll be back and talk with you again next week. Thanks so much.